What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight what I have for you guys is a pretty massive video talking about new details regarding Season 3, the Nuke event, as well as another topic that people requested for me to discuss. Definitely stay tuned, but before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because about 70% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so make sure you guys are getting notifications every time I update you on Black Ops Cold War. But I do have a zombies video planned for tomorrow since it's been a couple of weeks. There are a couple of updates I want to address in regards to zombies and some future DLC maps. Be on the lookout for that video tomorrow evening but we have just 11 days to go for season two and there is currently a tier sale going on in case you guys out there haven't finished your battle pass yet there's still a little bit of time to go with double xp currently going live in both black ops cold war and warzone still a solid week and a half or so to hit master rank 200 for the current season hopefully you guys can hit that by then but as i predicted both gunsmith customs and the revis operator bundle went live as of yesterday and thank you again yesterday during my new episode of bombcast with with the man himself, Damon Victor Allen, the new voice actor of Woods for Black Ops Cold War. We had a ton of fun, but during the podcast, an update went live in Black Ops Cold War with those two features that should have probably went live on Thursday, but didn't for whatever reason. Gunsmith Customs is a great feature, don't get me wrong. It was actually in Modern Warfare, if I'm not mistaken, but the feature went live, got removed after, I think, two hours because of some bugs and some exploits, and then they brought the feature back, I think it was late last night, but there isn't support for Gunsmith Customs in Zombies just yet, which I get is pretty frustrating, but I'm sure support for that will be added at some point during season three but we also have the revis operator bundle for 2400 cod points hopefully she plays a bigger role in the next season's cutscene. i'm assuming that she will along with wolf and the rest of the squad that was with woods but a quick update in regards to the nuke event so an animated calling card was just discovered known as verdance goes boom it was posted all over twitter very easy to find but within about two hours it got taken down by activision so again maybe check the description if you guys are interested in this but the calling card itself will apparently be earned for free after taking part in what is considered part one of this two-part nuke event so we're not sure why this is being split into two parts again one part could be during the beginning of season three the next part could be at some point in season four lots of possibilities with exactly how this can go again lots of rumors are floating around right now that apparently the 80s verdansk revamp won't happen until season four so don't take that for certain again it's just a rumor being spread around by some data miners out there but data miners as i said before could have easily misinterpreted some information which could conflict with exactly what's going on with this 80s revamp of Verdansk. So if they don't decide to drop the next iteration of Verdansk in Season 3, then the community is in for a real rude awakening. I definitely expect lots of backfire, lots of controversy because of that. We're already apparently not getting a new map, the Euro Mountains, that we've all heard about for quite some time now. I also wouldn't be surprised if at some point during Season 3, we get the release of the supposedly finished Mono Warfare 3 campaign remastered. No, there is no multiplayer coming with that, but considering they've already started dropping some season 7 content for modern warfare which is the three new multiplayer maps wouldn't be surprised if they save the two new weapons or even the soap operator as a bit of a pre-order bonus for going ahead and purchasing the remaster of modern warfare 3 considering soap did play a big role in that campaign anyway so that could happen at any point there were rumors that that has been done for a while it's just around the corner so i think it would be a bit poetic to see season 3 also release modern warfare 3 campaign remastered but stay patient for that on top of that there were some new rumors spreading around that on the 80s we have over dance we're going to be seeing the new points of interest that are summit bridge crossover obviously vorkuta duga and mines so obviously in the lead celebrity trailer for the 80s for dance we got a glimpse of duga and mines which have been ripped directly from the completed euro mountains warzone experience that i guess Treyarch had finished quite some time ago who knows if that's still going to release but we do know that locations from that map are being thrown onto this new version of Verdansk. not sure how that makes any geographical sense but i think what gets me here is summit 
Summit. So we know Summit was 100% going to be on Treyarch's original Warzone map, but they may have taken that and are throwing that onto Verdance too. I'm not sure how that could fit in, but hey, Summit is Summit. We all love that map. It's been great across several different iterations that we've seen in different Black Ops games. So let's see how it plays out over on the Warzone engine. But something else that popped up the other day, which kind of blew me away, was the fact that Blackout assets have been added to the Warzone files. So like, I'm not a data miner. You know, this could have been misinterpreted by the people out there who posted this, but I'll just report on it anyway. So some assets such as an ambulance system, which is similar to the reboot vans from Fortnite, that has been discovered and added recently. We also have the new vehicle such as a police car, a medical transport, a van, and a personal transport. Not sure what that could be, but obviously we had a police car and whatnot over in Blackout from Black Ops 4. We also have a helmet system apparently coming, which also was in Blackout in the form of level 3 armor. So if you picked up level 3 armor, it would give you a stronger vest, of course, but also a helmet to protect from some deadly headshots. So that may be coming to Warzone along with what looks like Blackout emotes, which have popped up in the Warzone files for whatever reason. So is there a possibility that the Euro Mountains experience, which may have been for Blackout 2 at some point in the past, could that still drop in Warzone? Sure. Again, take everything that you've heard with a grain of salt in regards to data mines, but that has me a bit excited if Blackout features or Blackout mechanics get added to the 80s for dance, it could still feel like a Treyarch Warzone experience of some sort if they bring in the vibe and energy that Blackout had two years ago. I would love to see that. I mean... <laughs> Warzone can get a full overhaul once this 80s revamp happens. Even if we don't see a new map that replaces Verdansk, seeing a new evolution of that map could definitely change the pacing up, change how the gameplay works, and kind of get the best of both worlds if you guys were a fan of Blackout over Warzone. But an ambulance reboot system similar to the Fortnite vans could be interesting, but I guess that means that would replace the buyback stations if that's what they're going for. But now in regards to a topic that I've been holding off for a little while now, but people out there have been requesting for me to talk about exactly how to get a nuclear in Black Ops colder multiplayer. You've seen quite a few nuclear gameplays across some of my previous videos, and as I said, no, I don't reverse boost, but let's go through my process of getting a nuke in this game. So, the best maps for dropping nukes, in my opinion, again, just my opinion, are Nuketown, Raid, Moscow, Crossroad Strike, and Apocalypse. Pines is a bit tricky because of the slower paced gameplay and some of the weird spawns, but I still managed to pull one off, as you can see in the background gameplay of this video. And you could, of course, drop a nuke on just about any one of the maps that's in this game. If you get into the right lobby, go right ahead, but for a map like Satellite or even Miami Night, for example, those maps encourage quite a bit of sniping, so I wouldn't recommend running around with an SMG on a very sniper-heavy lobby or even a map that has a lot of slow-paced gameplay. That's just not the way I would do things. But one of the best parts of Cold War is also the fact that nearly every single weapon is solid enough and is what I call quote-unquote nuke-worthy. My goal is definitely to get at least one nuke using each one of my favorite weapons. Then I'll experiment with some other weapons that I don't use too often, but I'll show some of my best class setups towards the end of this video. I'll also use timestamps that are linked down below. People have to remember that unless you're reverse boosting, which I wouldn't recommend since dropping nukes on potatoes really doesn't measure your skill, is that sure, you have to be good at multiplayer to drop a nuke, don't get me wrong, but lobby RNG plays a very large role in the process as well. You want to hope that you don't get into a lobby where players are camping in dark corners, exploiting broken mechanics or weapons, or playing in a six-man stack that has dual diamond sniper setups. Don't be afraid to back out out of lobbies and find a better game, man. Who cares about the XP? People out there always have a problem with backing out of games, right? You're going to lose the XP. You know, you look weak if you back out. It's like, just have fun and play the game the way you want to play it. If you're not having a good time, just back out of the lobby. Nobody's judging that. It takes some time. It takes some restarts. It takes some lobby searching. That's just the way that it goes. If you get into a match where there's a six-man stack, things aren't going to work out. You know that. If you get into a lobby where there's professional snipers in the enemy team, because there's no flinch in this game, so many people are sniping, that's also a red flag. If people are spamming the broken purple tracer blueprints like 74U, RPD, DMD dual wield, you're going to especially reconsider the lobby that you're in. That's just the way that it goes when it comes to nuclear. So nothing to do with skill-based matchmaking. That's the way the enemy players are playing the game, which can affect your ability to drop a big streak in that match. That's just the way multiplayer is. So I also usually turn off crossplay when I'm going for nuclears because you'll see less PC players who have perfect laser accuracy using MAC-10s. That really pisses me off sometimes. So you'll see less Mac 10s in console friendly lobbies, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox. That's the way I've experienced things. But also to let people tell you that it's not a legit nuke if you use the death machine or the war machine. If you want to go on a gun only nuclear, then feel free or just go back to Black Ops 2 where 
you had to do that to get the nuclear. There's a calling card in the game that also asks you to get 20 plus nuclears using 20 plus different weapons where the kills you get are only by the weapons that you're using, no kill streaks. If you care about that, then definitely go for gun only nuclears without using Death Machine or the War Machine. More power to you, but it's not a fake nuclear if, let's say you get 10, 15 kills with your regular weapon, then you finish it off with a Death Machine or a War Machine. That's your preference and the way that you want to play. I mean, map control is huge when it comes to big streaks in this game too. So watch enemy spawns. Make sure you don't push too far to where you might flip the enemy spawns, which would have them flank right behind you. If you have another teammate using UAVs, counters, or harps, that could very easily help you with map control even when your streaks aren't ready to go. Now, I would say the best modes to drop a nuclear on would be either Domination or Stockpile. That might throw you by surprise, but Stockpile is a very well-paced mode, which could work in your favor if your teammates don't deposit some of the tags that they grab. But you can get into a game every now and again where your teammates don't stop scoring and the match ends within a couple of minutes. I know that could happen, but definitely give Stockpile a try. Domination is hit or miss because your flow could be ruined when the round transitions to the next round, so that might not be your best bet, but those are very lengthy matches, which are obviously best for going on huge streaks with. Now, in regards to my setup, starting off with perks, I would say for perk one, I'm usually either using Flak Jacket or Tack Mask, and Flak Jacket can help out in the case that the enemies are running with RCXDs, C4s, and especially the Gung Ho exploit where they're running around the map with a Semtex while holding a street sweeper that gets real irritating so that could help you out in those instances where there's a random explosion next to you while you're maybe one shot or weak on health that could assist you a little bit but also when it comes to attack mask this is huge in the case you run across a perfectly placed gas mine. I have seen live in game 25, 27, even 29 gun streaks ruined by a single gas mine. That is ridiculous. But for perk 2, I'm usually running scavenger to make sure I'm getting enough ammo for the weapon that I'm choosing to use. And for perk 3, I'm usually always sound whoring, so I'll probably run ninja to make sure I'm as silent as can be. But you may have a different preference for the perk you decide to use, and that is totally okay. Drop your feedback on that down below in the comments. Now, I'm running gunfighter on most of my classes, which you don't have to do. You might prefer to have perk greed so that your movement speed's a lot faster and you have more abilities with your perks, maybe you want to do that. But when it comes to Gunfighter, running a max amount of attachments on any one of the weapons in this game can really change up the pace of how good the weapon is against any one of the enemies you're facing. So this might surprise you now. I do run a SAM turret as my field upgrade, which again, you don't have to do, but what I've noticed across my nuclear gameplays is that that SAM turret played a very crucial role in ensuring that my harp or even the friendly UAVs on my team don't get shot down. But on the flip side, you could then shoot down the enemy UAVs, the enemy harps, that could help out quite a bit. I have seen streaks, even from my own experience, ruined by a lack of SAM turrets, right? I've had a game where I'm very close to a nuclear and my harp gets shot down, I lose where the enemies are, and then boom, I get flanked from behind. Or, you know, the enemies call in a counter and then I lose map control a little bit and the counter gets me killed. I mean, sometimes that happens, but obviously for a very indoors map like Checkmate, could be frustrating when it comes to some of the aerial kill streaks, because then where do you put a SAM turret, right? There's not many locations you can place it where it can shoot down a counter UAV or a harp, so I get it, right? Some maps don't work well with SAM turrets, but most of them do, at least when it comes to Cold War multiplayer. But that's about it for my tips in regards to getting a nuclear. Again, my class setups for some of my favorite classes will be put at the end of this video. Skip there now if you want, using the timestamps. But now when it comes to Season 3 updates for Black Ops Cold War, quite a few weapons were actually found, maybe dropping either in Season 3 or a bit after that. So we have the following. One is a fast burst rifle, which is being speculated to be the G11 from Black Ops 1. I would absolutely love to see that. Procedures Key also pointed that out in his video earlier today. The G11 is a classic. It was so fun to use in Zombies. We never saw it return in any other Black Ops game. So please, Treyarch, bring that one back. That is definitely a fan favorite that was used quite a bit back in the day, over 10 years ago. So G11 would be a nice fit for this game, in my opinion. We also have a spray-type weapon. Who knows what that could be? So that's being left as a question mark. We have a fast-fire LMG. So wouldn't be surprised to see another LMG added to Black Ops Cold War. There aren't very many in this game anyway. We then have a full auto pistol, so that's being speculated to be the Cap 40. That's a weapon that was brought back many times in the past, right? It was in Black Ops 2, I believe recreated for Black Ops 3, and then was definitely in Black Ops 4 again, so seeing that in Black Ops Cold War could be a bit weird because that's a bit of a futuristic weapon, but they could always redesign it and still have it feel like the Cap 40, even if it's called something different. We then have a burst tactical rifle. It's being thought to be the M8 from Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. You never know. I mean, there's a lot of good tactical rifles in this game already, and the burst rifle specifically, M16, the AUG, those are powerful in multiplayer and warzone, so this could be the next meta whenever it drops.
drops at some point. We also have the baseball bat, which I talked about a few times in the past. So I don't mind more melee weapons. You know, I wouldn't want to have more than two added per season. I'd rather have new actual weapons, whether it's a rifle, a shotgun, a pistol. I prefer those over melee weapons, but they're still fun to use. So that's coming at some point. We didn't have what is being called the recurve bow. Not sure what the point of that is. We already have the combat bow as a kill streak. We also already have, what is it, the crossbow that was just added recently with season two reloaded. So I don't know what a recurve bow could be for, but hey, it could be left over assets, might not come at all, could be scrap, you never know. But we also have the ballistic knife, last and definitely not least, which has been brought back in every Black Ops game since Black Ops 1, which is great to hear. So that'll be a lot of fun to use in Cold War. But as a reminder, we also have three upcoming kill streaks, which could release in any random order. We have the canine unit, which is a fan favorite that has to come back. We have the hand cannon, ripped right out of the campaign, but is essentially the new version of the Annihilator from Black Ops 3 and 4. And lastly, the flamethrower which we already saw in promo art for season one of Black Ops Cold War for some strange reason. They already promoted it, even though it's not in the game. Not sure why that was, but in relation to the nuclear we just talked about, getting a nuclear and colder multiplayer could be a lot easier when those streaks do drop, because think about it. Imagine having to only get maybe seven or so kills with your actual weapon. Then you have your hand cannon or flamethrower, which you can get another five to 10 kills with, boom. Then you can finish off your nuclear streak by using the death machine and the war machine after that. So if people are complaining now about how people are getting nuclear using kill streaks, it's gonna get even crazier and a lot funnier once those other streaks do drop at some point in the future. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the updates regarding Season 3 DLC weapons, the nuke event, the next Warzone experience, as well as how to get a nuclear in Cold War multiplayer? Were those tips helpful? Leave your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.